Hi Copic Craft friends, Michelle Houghton here. I am going to be doing some Copic coloring and airbrushing today on this image. The first part is going to be the airbrushing and the little air compressor that I have is pretty noisy. I managed to get a crack in it at some point and so that the motor keeps running no matter what. The image, so what I will probably do is get just started and then I'll probably either fast forward through that section or voice over that section so you're not listening to the motor hum the entire time. We'll see how bad the volume is on it. Um, the little image that I'm working it on is from the new October release over at Craft and Kimmy. You're kind of seeing one of these once a month these days, but have to double up my work somehow and be efficient with my time. So this one is called Gnarly Dude, and we've got a whole little set of narwhals that are adorable. And my daughter right now happens to be slightly addicted to little narwhals. So what I've done is I have stamped in the light pink ink from Craft and Kimmy. And then I stamped a second one on a um, post-it note. And I years ago, I found these ones that they're sticky on the entire back which I love and they become these great little masking tools that then I stick in my envelope with my stamp. So I reuse them over and over again. So what I'm gonna be doing is um, I mask the image, I'm gonna do some airbrushing to create some water and I'm probably gonna keep it right within this little area here. Just, I'm not gonna use that whole thing. And this is B32. And then I'm gonna use two more markers, Y11 and YR12. And I'm gonna use a stencil that was released last month, the previous month at Craft and Kimmy to create kind of some bands of light coming through that water. Now I did this one other time. I'm gonna to try to keep it pretty similar, but it'll, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna add the YR. It was a pretty strong color. So kind of playing with that a little bit. And then the only other thing you'll see kind of zip into the screen is I've got these, this is truly just um, plain white cardstock and it's gonna help mask off this stencil as I do those bands of color, okay? So I think that's all the information. Again, I'll kind of play it by ear. Either I'm gonna kind of shut off the noise and do a voiceover or fast forward through this section a little bit just so you guys aren't listening to the motor on my, um, my little air compressor. So the start is B32, and I plug that in, it clicks in, kind of double check that my marker tip is lined up with the nozzle and I can test it off to the side. Two issues, see where your angle is, that's where that air is blowing, is the angle of this. So if I point it straight down, it's actually going out here. So a couple different things, you can hold it underneath the nozzle and that's gonna automatically tip it or you can focus on kind of tipping your hand, either one. So if you like to hold it from behind, you just know you're gonna to have to kind of crank your wrist over a little bit. I'm gonna go kind of long horizontal stroke side to side. So I start off of the image and go across. I'm going horizontal because I'd like there to be, if there's gonna be a little bit of light in and out, I'd like those lines to be kind of horizontal with the water. Keep it at a similar distance from the paper. I can always go back up a second time. And I'm gonna go all the way down. And what you'll notice sometimes as you do airbrushing is that as you go, sometimes your ink appears to get lighter and lighter. I think some of this depends on the speed you're working at and that you are blowing ink off of the tip. So if you're not giving it a whole lot of time to rest and kind of refill and you're blowing air across it too. so. You're not drying your marker out per se, but you are pulling some ink out of it. So you might need to give it a few seconds in between. Restart up. 
This is one of those times also that it might be worth double checking how full your markers are as you finish airbrushing with them. It doesn't use a ton of ink, it's a really light mist. Um, just to give you an idea, if I take that B32 off to the side and color with it, that's the actual color and this is how it's airbrushing. It does look like this one is starting to get dry, so if I needed to do more, I would definitely want to come in and add more ink to that marker. Okay, so what my goal is, is to create kind of this band of light, and I'm gonna come through the sentiment and onto my little narwhal. Now, I would highly recommend, after having done this once, <laughs> We're going to do this this time if i can find it really quick we're going to use a little bit of washi tape and i have a piece sitting here that's intended for something else but i'm going to go ahead and tape down my stencil and i'm just working on top of a splat mat but this will help hold this in place because as i come in I'm going to use the white paper to mask off and I'm going to kind of create an angle effect. Obviously you could find a stencil that has more of an angle to it, but I figured I'm going to use and I'm going to test over here. This is Y11. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is just like when you color with Copics regularly, I'm layering color. So this is not gonna be a bright yellow because I put it on top of blue. So I have to keep that in mind as I'm doing that. So I'm gonna move these just slightly. I'm gonna switch my marker. Now the goal on this one for me, I want this to be a little bit lighter than what it was, so I'm going to try to keep it a little bit further away. So I'm going to lift it way up high. Of course then it's not showing at all. I don't feel like I got that very centered. Here we go. So let's do this. Let's lift up this one end. Yeah, I think that's just enough. I think I'm going to do one thing. I did this last time and I really like the look of it. I'm going to go back to my yellow. I feel like it kind of warmed up the image a little bit. Widen it just a little bit. soften that yellow red give more of a fuzzy edge so I'm trying to get not necessarily go all the way to the paper there we go all right air compressor turned off Again, we'll see what works with sound. Go ahead and pull this guy off. Now, think about this one. If you're gonna clean the stencil now, what do you need to clean up Copic markers with? Something with alcohol solution. So even just a plain rubbing alcohol is gonna work really well for that. Um, to get that clean, get that Copic marker off. It's not gonna work with soap and water because that will not clean up Copic marker. All right, ooh, that's hot.
So the best part about masking and coloring a background or any area is the reveal. So we don't have our little narwhal colored yet, but it's kind of cool when you peel this little guy off and suddenly you have this blank image. So what I do with these little guys is on my stamp set, I'll come in and stick these onto the plastic. And then when I come back and want to do another card, I have those little masks with my set ready to go. And that way I don't have to restamp and more importantly, recut them. All right, and I am going to color the this little guy exactly how I colored my other ones. So I'm going to use a series of blue violets, BB25 to start. Oh, but before I do that, let's get his little smile in his eyes so we don't lose them. This is a Copic Multiliner, a point one. I tend to use the really tiny point one in order to do eyes and mouths when I'm no line coloring in order to save those little details. And Copic, Copic multiliners work really well with Copics, but I do need to let that sit and dry. Luckily that little face is the last thing I will be coming up and touching with my Copic markers. So this is BV25, which is called a grayish a violet. It's a blue violet. So we got a lot of blue and a lot of violets. If you are familiar with my work, I use those BV2s quite a bit. It's a series that I really like. I use them a lot for shadows, cast shadows, but cooling down areas where I want it to get into deeper shadow areas. So it's a really common group that you'll see come out of my Copic bag. The interesting part, one of the things about no line coloring is like over on this side, my mask went a little bit beyond my light pink line. I can just extend this a little bit further and go over that and it actually kind of works. So we're just gonna do the body to start. BV23 grayish lavender this time. So we have a grayish violet and a grayish lavender. This little narwhal has a very bulbous head, very spherical up front. So that's how I'm gonna color him. Kind of like a ball with a very round highlight nearing the top. And because I'm going dark to light, I'm just starting in that dark area and flicking into the light area. And that's kind of blending that as it goes, especially since I'm using doing such a small area. It's not giving the ink time to dry, but it's kind of fun because this little guy looks like he's, he or she is looking up into that little ray of light. My daughter says, so my youngest is a swimmer, which a lot of you would know if you again know me. So the narwhal intrigues her because here we have a magical animal, but it's real. It's, it's a magical, but real animal <laughs> kind of similar to a unicorn, except this guy really exists. And so she likes that aspect. And of course, water, Anything water related, Lori's into. So that is why we are narwhal fans at the moment. So I, when this set came out, she and I were both pretty excited because it's kind of a right in our wheelhouse these days. We're fans. So on these little fins, the back ones, I'm actually only going to use the two darker colors. Oh, and I forgot to tell you what that lightest BV is. So we'll make sure to 
grab that here in just a second because we're going to do quite a bit more of it. So the darkest was the grayish violet BV25 and then we have the grayish lavender BV23 and the little front fins. We're going to try to use all three colors. We'll see if we can just sneak that in but the back ones lower in the water so we're only going to use those two darker colors the darkest kind of that shadow and then also the mid-tone the lightest is the bv20 which is dull lavender it's nice that all of those have kind of a similar naming to them easier to remember that way i guess and they kind of make sense Every once in a while, the color names don't totally make sense to me, but that's okay. No one asked, right? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go down along the bottom because his underside isn't going to get as much light as his top. Just because the way he's facing up into that light source. And again, kind of round it at the front, trying not to smear the work we've already done here. But that front end is going to have that, kind of catch that light here again. And now I've got my colorless blender. This is one of the things I love about the BV20 and the, this BV group is that they kind of break apart when you hit them with the colorless blender or more alcohol solution. So it's the violet and the blue that are in them separate. And so I love the effect, especially on little water animals or snow people or any of that. I always feel like it's a pretty effective color to use for those things. Gonna bring in a little more of the BV20 here. There we go. All right. I'm trying to do it in small portions at a time though, because it will push the ink, and I've got a little fuzzy going on over here. It'd be really easy to touch that dark ink and start getting that fuzzy as well. So I just want to be really cautious. I'm going to use a little bit of the mid-tone, that BV23, to kind of separate out this little fin a little more. There we go. Just enough. So then the only thing I have left is the little horn. And I'm going to use two yellows. I've got a Y28 and a Y28. 2-1. The Y28 is that lionette gold. And again, I'm going to try to pay attention to which way he's facing. So the lionette gold, the darker, is going to go to the back side, the side facing away from that light source. We have a distinct light source, obviously, this time. So I'm going to go around the bottom edge of the curl and up that back side with that lionette gold, the Y28. And then I'm going to come in with a Y21. And I'm going to soften that and come across to the front edge of the horn. And then this is really tiny. Normally I would leave um, a white highlight, but I can't because of... It being so small now I shouldn't say I can't I probably could if I went even slower and just really barely touch that paper so what I am going to do sorry shaking 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 I've got my um, Uniposca opaque white and I am going to Put a dot kind of right at the front upper corner of each of those. Mm, not 
not sure if I like that or not, but you could also use something like um, a chalk pencil or white colored pencil. It'd be a little bit softer, not quite so distinct. Anyways, I will trim this down and put this little guy on a card and share him. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a happy, colorful day.